Here to do number 18 on the General Curriculum 03 practice test. This is for elementary school teachers and special education teachers preparing to take this exam for their licensure. And this is also a great one for um, other uh, math specialists in elementary, middle school, and high school that are also preparing to take their MTELs. First, we're going to take a quick glance at this problem. Uh, I'm going to read it in a moment, but I just want to point out a few things. Just, just glancing at this very quickly, I, I notice, and you may notice, a lot of vocabulary. And this is the thing about all, these, all the questions on this exam. They are all filled with tons and tons of vocabulary. You got to know all the vocabulary here. If you don't, it's like reading a math problem and having it be blanks. Imagine trying to read a problem like that and you just you didn't have you didn't know what the words meant. So this is a great problem and I'm starting the question off like this by pointing out all the vocabulary in it that you're going well, you're going to have to go back and you have to figure out. Okay, so let's start with the problem. Number 18. Use the samples of a student's work below to answer the question that follows. It gives us the student's work. We're going to examine this in a moment. Which of the following statements best describes the mathematical validity of the algorithm that the student appears to be using? And just by the way, algorithm is just another way of saying a way of doing something. So, and validity is just uh, another way of saying maybe a uh, mathematical accuracy or, you know, truth. I don't know how validity is actually not that bad, but algorithm is just another way of saying uh, a way or method of doing something. All right, so is essentially, is the student's method correct? Well, we have some answer choices here. It says it's valid. It's not valid for any rational numbers. B, it's valid only when all numerators and denominators are integers. C, it's valid only when all the numerators and denominators are positive integers. Or D, it's valid for all rational numbers. Um, there's a lot of vocabulary here. I think, you know, maybe it'd be a good time to just review this. If I'm dealing with uh, rational numbers, I'm talking about all rational numbers. These are numbers, a rational number is a number that can be, uh, be represented as a fraction. And all rational numbers can be represented as a fraction like integers. Remember an integer is a, a, a number that can be divided by one with no remainder and they can be positive or negative. So here are some negative integers negative two, negative one, and then guess what we're gonna have some uh, zeros included but it's not a negative integer, it's neutral. Then we have some positive integers two, three. Okay so how is an integer a rational number, it needs to be able to be turned into a fraction. Well, isn't 2 over 1 a fraction? If it is, and all these can be turned into fractions, then it's a rational number. What are other examples of rational numbers? Well, fractions. All fractions, by definition, like these ones right here, are rational numbers. Um, anything else? Decimals. So fractions, integers, decimals, percents. These are all examples of rational numbers. Okay, so now I want to get rid of all that writing and then get into the problem a little bit more. So, um, if, we, if we go back to this portion here, the student's work, I think it's worthwhile to even ask ourselves what the heck the student's doing. The student has this problem, 9 over 16 divided by 3 over 4. And we're trying to find out if the way that they do it is accurate. Well, let's just do another. Let's, let's say I was doing this out. I want to get rid of the, the fraction, the denominator here. So I multiply by something called a reciprocal. Turn this into a 4 over 3. I do that for both the top and the bottom. Why do I do that? Well, 
if I multiply the bottom by the reciprocal, that's flipping the bottom fraction and multiplying it by, instead of 3 over 4, 4 by 3, it cancels out and becomes a 1. So I'm really only left with the top piece. Now the top piece would get me something like 9 times 4 and 16 times 3, because I'm multiplying across. But, notice I can reduce. I can do 9 divided by 3, reduce here. And that, that's exactly what the student does. And I can do um, 16 divided by 4 and reduce here. And that's exactly what the student does. So I'm going to get an answer of 3 fourths. And the student gets the answer of 3 fourths. So guess what? The student's way is also another way, a valid way, of getting to, uh, of dividing two fractions together. So we could do this out for all of them. And I think you should, you know, when you're studying this problem, you should go through this and do it for each one so you get the practice. But for, for time's sake, we're going to assume that the student's way is valid. Now, it says here, answer choice A says it's not valid for rational numbers. Well, guess what? We just tested it out with rational numbers, and it works. So that's incorrect. Um, B is valid only when the numerator and denominator are integers. Well, that's not 100% true because guess what? Our rational numbers were fractions, and both the numerator and denominator were fractions, and it still worked. So that's not true. C, it's valid only when the numerator and denominator are positive integers. Guess what? Hate to break it to you, but I could have turned this to a negative 15 and got a negative answer. It still would have worked. Cross that off. It's valid for all rational numbers. And this is the correct answer. Now this also leads us to another major math concept. This is a rational number. I'm going to call it a rat. Times another rational number. Or rational, a rat times a rat. Or a rat, a rational number, divided by a rational number. Doesn't matter what it is, you're always going to get, guess what? A rational or a rat. So this is how it goes. A rational number times another rational number, whether it's an integer, fraction, percent, decimal, or a rational number, divided by a rational number, it's always a rational number, or the, or the easy way to remember it is a rat times a rat, a rat times a rat, or a rat divided by a rat is always a rat. I want you to remember this because this is, comes up a lot in different shapes and forms on the test. But either way, D is the correct answer. The student's way is valid for all rational numbers. Because rational numbers are like integers, fractions, and decimals percents. And if I did this method that the student had, it would work for any combination of rational numbers. Okay, team, I hope you found this helpful. Uh, again, this is a real big vocabulary question. You've got to go back. You've got to make sure that you understand each one of these words here. Don't just guess at it. Go back, make sure you're clear on this. So you have a you have a firm grasp of all the math concepts. Then you can go in and you can start answering this question. And just remember, if it's a fraction, an integer, or a uh, you know a decimal or percent, it's a rational number. And a rational number times a rational number, or a rational number divided by a rational number, is always going to get you a rational number. So this is always going to be valid for rational numbers.